Shalom, sisters. Uh, first and foremost, I want to give all uh, honor and glory to Yahweh Bashimi Yahweh Shai. I want to thank him for allowing me to make these videos for y'all. It's such a blessing, and I'm like, I feel it feels so good to get so much positive feedback um, back from the videos. Uh, so all praise to the Most High that this, that this is, you know, my videos are helping sisters. And uh, I started doing these videos to uh, even encourage myself. Like I know we, you know, we all know right from wrong. And I know uh, I figured if I started making videos, it would push me even harder to be the woman that I need to be. Because I, you know, if not, then I'll be a hypocrite in the sight of all men. And I don't, I don't want that to happen. So. And like I had told my husband, I said, yeah, you know, I did it because I started doing videos because, you know, it really makes me go harder for myself, too. So anyway, uh, today's topic is characteristics of an Israelite woman. Um, but Sarah is the woman. She's a topic today. I've been reading Genesis. I started reading Genesis to my kids. We started from the, we started we went back to the back to the beginning. Um, and I know Genesis is a very Genesis is a very deep book. Uh, I know a lot of times we may just read and look. We we may look over deep stuff like when uh, Yahweh made them coats of skin and being naked and things like that. Uh, it's a very deep book that you know things that we look over. But I'm not. I, who am I to break any of that down? So. Men have breakdowns on it, but I'm not about to get all into that. But the name of this video is Sarah, a righteous foremother. Um, I've been like so pressed and excited to do this video all day. She's such a beautiful woman. Like Sarah, I wish I just wish I knew what she looked like. I wish I would, you know, met I wish I could meet her, you know, Lord willing in the kingdom. I get there and uh I get to meet her. That would be so exciting and such a blessing. So uh anyway. So we all know Sarah's name was changed in Genesis, but uh, I want to bring out first that Sarah was very beautiful. She was a very beautiful woman. Let me move this down a little bit. Sarah was a, a very beautiful woman. She, uh, and, you know, they made that known in the scriptures. You know, Yahweh was letting us know that we come from a uh, very beautiful woman. It says that it's in Genesis uh, 12, 11, and 16, when Abraham said that she was fair, he said, look, Abraham said, look, we're going to hide you because it was a famine in Egypt. And Abraham said, I don't want them, I don't want Pharaoh to know that you're my, that you're my wife because they might take you and kill me. So Abraham was thinking ahead. He was being wise. He was like, look, he said, you're beautiful. You're fair. They're going to try to take you and kill me. And when they got to Egypt, because it was a famine, so when they got to Egypt, Pharaoh, he told Sarah to say, you my sister. So Pharaoh was like, okay, this your sister. I'm going to give you um, ox, uh, cattle, whatever you So he took Sarah. He took Sarah because, and he said that the Egyptians saw that she was very fair. So she was a very beautiful woman. And um, she was so beautiful that the Pharaoh wanted to wife her and give her brother a whole bunch of riches. So, you know, she was beautiful. She was a beautiful woman. Um, second of all, we, you know, we all know that Sarah was barren. We all know that she couldn't have children. Um, she pretty much lived half of her life not uh, being able to conceive. And as a woman... That's a very that that's a very tough situation. You can be like, oh my gosh, you know, you can get down about it. You might get depressed about it. You might feel some type of way about it. You know, we don't know what Sarah was going through, but she seemed as though she was a strong woman. Uh, she was content. That's a characteristic. She was content. And the scriptures tell you, uh, Paul said in um, Philippians be content she was very content she was content with the fact that she couldn't have children at that time she was content she wouldn't have her life with it that's a very that's a characteristic that we as israelite women need to think upon we need to be content with the things that we have whether it be you got 
pair of winter, one pair of winter boots, or you got one pair of whatever it is. You got one coat. You got um whatever it, whatever it is that you have. You need to be content with it, and have faith and mercy that the most that the Most High will um uh, bless us at the end, and increase us at the end in um, the wilderness and in the kingdom. So you gotta be content. And Sarah was content with the fact that she's gonna have children. Uh, she was a loving. She was a very loving woman. And one of the reasons why I say that is because she gave, uh, she loved Abraham so much that she gave her maid to him. She gave Abraham her maid to be a wife and to conceive and bear him a child. Uh, not many women can say that these days. Not many women can say, hey, I can't have kids. Let me give you um, this woman over here that can have kids. Not when, not or that can possibly have kids. Not many women can can do that. And she loved her husband because she knew she she knew Abraham wanted to have children. She knew that. You know, you ain't think they laid down. She was probably crying. And he was probably telling her, it's okay, Sarah. It's okay. You know, it's okay. It got to the point where she said, I love my husband so much that I'm going to give you my handmaid. Go ahead, lay down with her. T take her to be your wife. Have a child with her. And she loved Abraham. Um, that's the characteristic as Israelite women that we need to to show if you if you love your husband you're gonna give your husband whatever he want and that goes back into like i said in my one of my very first videos if you love your husband in the wilderness you know your husband want to have another wife or whatever it is that your husband want if you love your husband you gonna be like sarah and you gonna give him whatever he want that's if you love your husband you gonna give him whatever he want just like sarah did and i know it's no if ands or buts or maybe uh, no, you're going to do what Sarah did. She gave Abraham a whole, her maid. And she was an Egyptian. She, You know, she gave her a heathen. So uh, another thing is she displayed selflessness. Self, well, yeah, selflessness. She was selfless. Selfless. Um, and she was very meek. And I want to say that because... She was concerned with the needs of her husband and ultimately the needs of her nation. She knew what was going on. Sarah wasn't an idiot. She knew that um, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah was dealing with Abraham. She knew who Abraham, she knew what was going on. She knew she was with a righteous man. So she, you know, did what she had to do to please her husband for the nation of Israel. Um, you know, even though she didn't know what was going on all the way, but she knew that you know, her husband needed an heir, you know, to preserve his seed so his name could go on and live forever. She knew that. And that's and that's very selfless and that's very meek. And, you know, a lot of women, a lot of Israelite women and a lot of women today just in general are selfish. And I can say that, like, we, we, we might be selfish when we don't want to share our husbands. We don't want our husbands to be happy. We don't want, a lot of us don't. Um, well, how am I going to feel if this happens? And what about this situation? It's, you know, America kind of always kind of taught us to be selfish, but we wasn't selfish when Miss Sarah wasn't selfish. She was meek and she was beautiful and she was content. And those are all characteristics that we need to display as Israelite women in today, in today's society. Um... Oh, and, you know, Sarah, uh, she regretted, she regretted the fact that she gave Hagar her, um, maid over to him because Hagar was despising her, like, hmm. she probably, Hagar was probably like, hmm. she can't even have children, and I can't, and I'm, I'm with her husband. Like, she, she was probably looking at, uh, Sarah some type of way, and Sarah was like, what, like, Sarah probably was like, I'm about to square up with you right now, let's, like, what you, what you looking at me like this for, what you trying, you trying to treat me some type of way? You my maid. You know what I mean? So, um... Anyway. Yeah, she was selfless. And she was meek. And I want to also add that she was firm and stern. Like, she dealt hardly with her servant, uh, Hagar. 
to the fact that she left. Hagar ran. She was like, I'm out of here. I, I can't do it no more. It was probably real bad. She was probably on her back because Hagar had the audacity to despise her. So, you know, she was very firm. She was stern. Uh, you know, she dealt hardly with uh, Hagar. Uh, I also want to add that she was loyal. Sarah was very loyal because in two situations when uh, Abraham, she was loyal to Abraham. She was loyal because Abraham told her, uh, look, when we go to Pharaoh, tell Pharaoh that you my sister. You Not once does it say, Sarah said, no, I'm not about to tell him that. No, what are you doing? Why do you, Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? No, she didn't do that. She didn't do that. You see, she ain't say nothing the whole time until stuff started happening to Pharaoh. She, she was like, okay, I ain't gonna say nothing. Second situation is with, um, what's his name? Dang, I don't wanna pronounce his name wrong, so forgive me if I say it wrong. It's, I think it's Abimelech. Abimelech, uh, he tried to take her, you know, and uh, Abraham told her the same thing. He said, this is my sister. He said, this is my sister. She didn't say, no, I'm not. Why you, you don't want to claim me? Abraham, you don't want to claim me? Please don't do this. You, you let me go with this man? She didn't do stuff like that. She didn't say nothing. She didn't say not a damn thing out her mouth. Oh, so she was quiet. Let's say that. She was quiet. Let me go back over it. Let me go back over the characteristics. Well, I'll do that in a minute. So she was a loyal woman. She was loyal to Abraham. She was very obedient. When um when Abraham told her, when the angels came to the house, when he when Abraham was chilling outside his tent, uh, he told Sarah, go make some cakes. And she, she probably knew what was going on. She knew, she was, she said, who are these men? These, you know, some angels came to the door. Let me make these. She probably went over there. He told her, go put them, uh, make some cakes, put them on the hearth. She probably hurried up, patted them together. She probably sweating like, oh my goodness. Told her servant, hey, can you hand me this? Can you hand me this? You know, she did it. She, she and he told her to do it quickly. So, you know, she was on it. And that's the same way we need to be. When your husband tell you to do something, even if you don't know what's going on, just do it. Just do it. So she was obedient to her husband. And she also called him Lord. When um when the angels was in the tent telling her that uh telling Abraham, and she overheard it when the uh, angels was telling uh Abraham, look, you're gonna have a son. He, I'm a, when, the, when the uh the Lord said I'm gonna come back to you according to the time of life. Sarah laughed in her mind. She laughed in her mind like I'm not, old. I, I, I'm not about to have no son. I'm old. I'm not about to have no son. You know. She said, you know, my Lord is old too. So she called her husband her Lord. She was obedient to her husband. Um, Sarah was also a princess. And I looked up us uh, the definition of Sarah after I even did this. And um, Sarah actually in Hebrew is princess. But she was uh, a princess. And she was a princess because, you know, after she died, well, every, she was just a princess in general because she was a daughter of Zion. But she was a princess because Abraham, oh, he was a mighty prince among the heathen in Genesis chapter 23. When um, she died, Abraham went to go bury her. And uh, they was like, oh, we know that you're a mighty prince. You know, she was a princess. And I want to also put, I mean, go over again. That just go over her characteristics. She was beautiful. She was content. She was loving. She loved her husband. She was self. She she displayed selflessness, meekness. She was firm. She was stern. She didn't play no games with her servant. Um, she was very loyal. She was obedient uh, to her husband, and she was a princess. Uh, and that's our foremother. Like, I don't know why I'm getting the chills talking about it. Um, she was so beautiful. And, uh, you know, that's our foremother, Sarah, for you. And these are all characteristics that we should display as Israelite women. And it's all characteristics that we should um, eat right down and uh, meditate on. 
especially the uh, being selfless, not being selfish, you know? That's not what, who we are as Israelite women. It just showed us that in Genesis, it showed us that we, we were selfless. She cared about her husband so much. She didn't care if he laid down with her handmaid. Uh, Babylon made us care about our husband being with uh, different women and our husband not being happy, our uh, husband only being with one woman. That's because Esau, they don't even, half of the times, they made all of these philosophies through movies and everything in the law. They, think about it, Esau is the only nation on this earth that doesn't condone having another wife. And the only reason why is because they like men because they're gay half of the time and they like animals. Like they're weirdos. You go over to India, Pakistan, Iraq, you name it, they they all have multiple wives over there. But over here, they just like, just flipped everything around. You know, it's hard for an Israelite woman to, um, to get that mind state like Sarah and say, hey, here's my husband. My husband wanna have more kids, you know. Um, here's my husband, I'll share my husband with you. It's hard for Israelite women to do that. But, um, but with sisters nowadays, you don't know what's going on. But anyway, that's what, how they did it in the ancient world. And that's the same mindset we need to have, like in the wilderness and, you know, in the kingdom, the law is going to be in us already. But in the wilderness, that's the same type of mindset that we need to have. We need to have the same mindset as Sarah. I'm going to read them over again. She was a princess. Uh, she was obedient. She was loyal. She was stern. She was firm. She displayed selflessness, meekness. She was content, loving, and a very beautiful woman. Um, and with that being said, call hello Yahweh by Shimmy Shai and the water for even uh, allowing us to uh, read the scriptures to even know what our foremothers was like. And um, hopefully, sisters, y'all write down her characteristics and y'all meditate on them, or you post them up and you, you know, you think about them and you say, hey, you know, I want to be more like Sarah. She was a beautiful woman. She was classy. She was a princess, and she didn't play no games. To the point where her handmaid fled from her, so like it, her handmaid fled from her. So um, with that being said, shalom, warm sisters, the water for watching, uh, like, comment, subscribe. You know, let me know what's going on. Let me know any other topics, uh, and um, that's all I gotta say for tonight. So with the water for watching and shalom.